Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm covering 90 Day Fiance season 7 episode 3. Um I feel like <laughs> as of now the season's kind of getting a bit boring. Um I haven't really seen any drama as of yet. Um except for one couple which I'll discuss and I still have yet to see Michael and Angela. Michael and Angela, yes. So, and I already know that they are already entertaining within themselves, so I'm kind of disappointed that we haven't seen them this episode. So, with that being said, let's jump into it. So first, I'm going to discuss um, Anna and Marcel. So, there really wasn't much to discuss. They're just hashing out what happened last episode when he told Anna's mom and son that he kept them hidden, kept her kids hidden from his family because his family would con either convince him or force him to go back to Turkey and to leave Anna and uh, like kind of pretend like this, like this life doesn't exist. So I'm kind of, it's kind of exhausting here like watching the relationship because there's no emotion that you that you're getting out of them because they're constantly like so uh tell him why did he uh do this and then he really is like i did this because like so it's kind of um it's kind of hard watching the relationship um I understand from Marcel's point of view of like I want to be with the person I love but it's better to just not ruffle any feathers because I don't want to deal with my family and I don't want to lose my family. And I also understand the side from Anna where it's like I also don't want to be your dirty little secret where um, you're kind of living two lives. Um, they tell the kids about the situation. The kids are obviously um, not too happy about it. I didn't appreciate when her sons was like, oh, I don't believe you that you would stay for me. I'm like, is your mother that horrible? <laughs> Does your mom treat you that bad that you're just like, <sighs> my mom is, my mom would choose a man over us. So I was like, sir, don't do that if that's not the type of mom that you have. So that's kind of it with them. So uh, the next couple we have is Michael and Juliana. There really wasn't much here, so Michael picks up Juliana from the airport in a Hummer limousine because he wants to be fancy, whatever. Um, you kind of get to hear about Juliana's life in the small town she is from in Brazil, of just like the things they have to do to survive and get by. And I, when she's telling me the story, I'm just like, girl, you hit the jackpot. You hit it big because you're never going to have to live that life. And you'll have enough money to have your family live a decent life in Brazil. So they get to Michael's house and he's and Michael is going to meet, sorry, Juliana is going to meet Michael's kids, um, Cece and I believe Max. If it's not Max, I'm going to call him Max. Um, so yeah, he, they were so welcoming, they were so nice, Juliana was so pleasant, calling Cece a princess, I love that. The kids, I'm guessing the kids weren't alone, but she's gotten a better welcome than some of these, these folks on, on these, on the show, because they made a cake for her, they cooked breakfast, brunch kind of, they were warming up the food, um, his daughter's very resourceful cooking, and it was so sweet when Max was like, oh, so, like, I heard in Brazil, like, avocado's a dessert, and, like, he's one of the few people that does research, her, probably one of the only people that actually do research on the person's culture before he meets them before like he gets to know them versus these people just kind of f falling into the situation and I like that she still ha she has um, 
kind of like a wall up as to whether uh, Mike trust Michael trusts her with um, his kids, but she's willing to work at it, and she already has her career figured out of what she wants to do here. So uh, she's not like she's gonna be kind of just winging it and figuring it out. So that's kind of all of that um, uh, with them. So next we have Tanya and Sinjin. So. It's another day in New York, and another day with Sinjin, Tanya, and her friends. I felt it for Sinjin when he was just kind of like, Your friend, like, they're coming again? Because I would have gotten annoyed. If I'm hanging out with my man, and this is not like just a regular day out with my man. This is like, I haven't seen my man in months. And I get some time for us to be away. Like, this is our kind of like mini vacation. I don't want my friends to be there. My friends can be there on the first day for moral support, but it didn't even seem like, because I thought maybe the, her friend drove and like she used her for a ride. It didn't seem like that. It just seemed like she wanted the friends to be introduced to him, which they could have done that when they went back to their home city, their or sorry, hometown. So I didn't also appreciate that Tanya was just like, oh... If I had to choose between you and my friends, I'm choosing my friends. I understand I'm a ride or die when it comes with when it comes to friends and maintaining my relationships with my friends. I would never f feel right if I had to choose between those two. But it also you're also hurting the person's feelings, the person right there when you're just like, I don't care. We've been we've been friends for 14 years. If you have to go, it's like you have to go, type of thing, and it doesn't make you feel valued. Um, they hang out a bit, and then they get into the discussion of uh, babies. So we know that according to Tanya's schedule, she wants to have a baby in three years. Not three years in two days, like three years on the dot, she wants to have a baby. And I feel like this is also like this conversation that she had. It could have went two ways. It could have been girl talk, where you talk about that with your friends, or it could have been an intimate conversation you had with your significant other. I don't feel like this is something that you need to be telling people, because you're not on the same page. It's one thing to be like, yes, we agree that this is... No, you want this, and, and he wants this, and you guys are fighting in front of your friends, which is embarrassing. Um, she has her life scheduled, scheduled out very meticulously. And Sinjin does not. I didn't, I wasn't too happy with his career aspirations because they were all over the place and maybe have three career aspirations. They were, oh, I'm gonna do bartending, I'm gonna be opera, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be an actor. Like, I feel like at that point, I, like, I'm getting tired. I'm looking for someone who, you don't need it all figured out, but you need to have some kind of plan. And then to have our friends tell him that, that was, that was embarrassing as well, because it just made him seem like he's all over the place, even though he is. <laughs> so, um, then they went out for dinner, and the topic of the kids came up, and it seemed like this is not something that he's willing to negotiate on, and I feel like you shouldn't have have to. Um, I feel like these are conversations that you'll have, or I, f I feel like you're supposed to have when you're ready to marry someone. Or like, not even at that point, when you're going to think about proposing to someone. I feel like all of your ideas, thoughts, opinions, should have been hashed out when it comes to serious topics like that, especially if you decide to commit to each other for a lifetime. I feel like those those type of questions and answers should have happened already. But they haven't, and I feel like Tanya means what she says, and she's not being very lenient. Um, she's, not negotiate she's not negotiating, she's just kind of determining the terms and kind of telling him and I wouldn't want to have a type of relationship like that where everything is planned and I'm supposed to do everything according to 
a board or according to a schedule. So you can already see problems stirring, but like a appropriate problems for people who are getting to know each other and you can still tell that they're getting to know each other I don't understand how they hop from getting to know each other to we're marrying each other anyways none of my business so next we have Emily and Sasha there really wasn't much because um, it was just about her having the baby uh, Russia hospital scare me why don't they turn on the lights in the hospital I'm used to seeing bright lights everywhere stark white they need to turn on more lights. Um, the hospital rooms are big, but empty. That bed looked very uncomfortable for a pregnant woman whose back especially hurts. Um, <laughs> that epidural she got, did it work? Because I swear, after she got it, she was still screaming in pain. Um, I'm glad that Sasha got to be there to see the, the, the magic of giving birth and this is very hard and this is something that you need to appreciate your significant other for doing because this isn't just giving birth you are also changing your body you're changing your hormones you're changing all these stuff for to create this newborn um but uh it happened that she would have to get a c-section because of complications the c-section went well and they have little David. I thought his name was Dave at first, and I was like, Dave? I'm like, Dave sounds like a nickname, but his name is David. So that's all for that. So next we have Robert and Annie. So <sighs> Robert and Annie <laughs> are a hot mess. Um, it's day one. They're already fighting. You can already tell that Robert has a mouth on him and Annie is very petty and I don't know what was happening in these these phone conversations where I guess she was promised the world and stuff like this but boo boo it's not happening I can tell you now he's not making that kind of money boo boo you gotta accept what you got you have I did think it was mad disrespectful for him to go bring her to a thrift shop unless I tell you specifically that I like secondhand stuff or I like thrifty stuff I like flea market stuff don't have me thinking that you're gonna take me shopping and throw Louis Vuitton or Versace and then bring me to a thrift store that was very very disrespectful very very rude of him and I'm so surprised that he was surprised that she was upset because you can tell that she's a little stush she has a little she has high standards but it is what it is that's what she had going in in this and I don't know how he did not know that um, because I don't think they were having the right phone conversations um, they were having phone conversations but probably not the right ones um, plus they only knew each other for a day you can't get to know somebody in a day so um, lots of arguments you're not gonna get the new newest version of the iPhone so we can stop with that mess um, and it was just well, it wasn't funny to them, but it was funny to me just seeing them argue and, oh, well, I want to sleep far away from you. Oh, you're going to get the couch. And, oh, who she thinks talking to? Who she thinks she's talking to? She's so selfish. And I'm like, this is what happens when you only know somebody for a day. And you have to now live with them full time and commit to all this stuff. So it was really funny watching them because it was just like, oh my god, petty. People are petty. And talking about the person while they're there you have added to well you said you're gonna do this I don't understand maybe you're not a man of your word and blah 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 and I don't know why she's talking about Miami Beach she needs to be living here she needs to be grateful for where she's living and blah 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 so we'll see what happens with them um, but I, I definitely enjoyed watching them so last but not least we have Mike and Natalie uh, Mike is 34 from Sequim, Washington. Um, Mike is an, um, a small town boy. Uh, I shouldn't call him a boy. He's a man. He's a very tall man. And he met Natalie through, I guess, his best friend um, because they are both godparents to um, their, their friend's child. 
Um, she's from the Ukraine. They hit it off, and I forgot where they met first, but he proposed to her in Paris after three months. Um, she seems like very vivacious, very um, outgoing, adventurous, and he seems like he's not necessarily that way, and I feel like I could also see them clashing because of that. He likes that about her, but he's not that person. Where it's like, it's good from afar, it's like good that you do it, but like for me, no. And I can see that um, being a problem with them. Um, his biggest secret is his debt. He has a lot of debt. I don't think he should have bought that land if he couldn't afford it, and he's now going to be up to his eyeballs in debt. It's not worth it. Um, but he doesn't want to tell her, which... You should always discuss finance if you decide to marry somebody. So that conversation needs to... I don't know why he doesn't have that conversation with her. While he's talking to her on webcam, he has that conversation with her. When she finally gets approved, she gets here and then she's ready to marry him being like, Well, I'm in debt. Um, so I don't understand why people operate like that. Um, anyways... I think that's kind of all for them. They kind of seem a bit boring. Um, that secret is not a big secret, it's a very common secret. <laughs> a woman dead, it's like, ooh, uh, big deal. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. So I think that's it for my recap of Night of Fiance Season 7, Episode 3. Um, so far, except for Robert and Annie, it's kind of boring. I need to see Angela and Michael next week. So with that being said, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh. Yeah. I'm just a dumb cunt, fucking sick and tired of it Maybe I could front look, maybe I could buy a zip Maybe I get fucked up, next time I could say some. Why it's gotta be like this, why it's gotta be that way Put it inside yourself, rise up, banging on that loud